Hi, today we're talking about ideal gases and kinetic theory. So first we'll uh, go over the ideal gas law, which you're probably familiar with from previous studies, maybe in chemistry or something like that. And secondly, we'll talk about what we call kinetic theory, and that simply involves applying basic ideas of physics, like um, impulse and momentum, conservation, and uh, Newton's second law things like that, to uh, individual molecules. Okay, so uh, just to get us rolling, let's just go over what Avogadro's number is. And uh, a mole is basically used just like we use a dozen. So a dozen represents a certain number of things. It means 12 things. And a mole means just a lot bigger number of things, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. And this is what we call Avogadro's number, and with a little a subscript. Okay, so let's keep that in mind as we go forward. But it's a huge number of things. 6 times 10 to the 23rd molecules, atoms, eggs, whatever. Okay, so here we have a simulation of an ideal gas. So we've got a box, we've combined these identical molecules. There's just one that's actually a different color than the other ones, just so to make it easier to track. But uh, the molecules are all identical. They're bouncing off the walls and uh, zooming around, having collisions, etc. So let's go over the properties of an ideal gas and talk about the ideal gas law. So an ideal gas has to satisfy these conditions. It consists of a very large number of identical molecules. And the volume occupied by the molecules themselves is negligible compared to the volume of the container that they, that they occupy. And the molecules obey Newton's laws. And they move about randomly. They experience forces only during collisions. So we're assuming that they're uh, unaffected by the gravitational force. They just hit walls and change direction when they hit, hit walls and uh, they can hit each other other too. And any collisions are completely elastic. So, you've probably seen this before, the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, the pressure times the volume is the number of moles times the ideal gas constant, the gas constant times uh, the absolute temperature. So this is an equation with a T in it, so we're going to use temperatures in Kelvin. Okay, so again, P is pressure, V is volume, N is number of moles, T is temperature, absolute temperature. And the universal gas constant here has a value of 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin. So you might have seen a different uh, value of R before, maybe with different units, but uh, this is the one we're going to use, 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin. Now, we can write the ideal gas law in terms of not little n, the number of moles, but large n, capital N, which is the number of molecules. And that just brings in Avogadro's number. So the number of, um, so if we multiply and divide by Avogadro's number, we haven't changed anything. But little n, the number of moles, times the number of molecules per mole, that's what Avogadro's number is, gets you the number of molecules. So lowercase n times Na is capital N, the number of molecules. And then R, the uh, universal gas constant, divided by Avogadro's number, we just roll that into another constant known as K, the Boltzmann constant, and that's 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23rd joules or Kelvin. And again, that is that value is R, 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin, divided by 6.02 times 20, 10 to the 23rd. So that's the universal gas constant divided by Avogadro's number there. Okay, so PV equals NRT with a little n, PV equals NKT with a capital N. They're totally equivalent ways to uh, write the ideal gas law. Okay, so kinetic theory is uh, when we apply Newton's laws to individual molecules and ideal gases, 
And our starting point, we're not really going to derive it here in this video, but um, you can refer to the textbook if you want to see the derivation. So the starting point generally is to place an atom, a single atom, of ideal gas in a box, and you then look at the pressure associated with that atom as it bounces off the walls. And then you add a whole bunch more atoms, so you kind of average over everything to see what, uh, what happens. So we're just going to go straight to the results. So uh, there are going to be three things that come out of this. Uh, the third one really is probably the most important of all, but we'll start with this one. And what is pressure? Pressure is associated with collisions of gas particles with the walls. And so uh, each collision, there, the uh, molecule applies force to the wall, the wall applies force back on the molecule. And the average force from all these particles divided by the wall area gets you the pressure. And if you increase temperature, well, the pressure goes up. And there's a couple of good reasons for this. Again, you can see this from the PV equals NRT equation. Keep V the same, keep N the same. So increasing temperature means something on the left has to increase. That's going to be the pressure. OK, so if you increase temperature, what happens is the molecules on average are moving faster. OK, so in a particular instant in time, particular time interval, because they're moving faster, they're bouncing back and forth across the box faster, there are going to be more collisions. And the change of velocity going in at one velocity, coming back with a negative velocity. Uh, speed is constant here because the collisions are elastic with the walls. Um, the collisions involve a larger average force because the momentum change is uh, larger, and then we've got impulse uh, ideas going on. Okay, So more collisions, and each collision involves a larger average force. So both of those increase the pressure. And another thing you could do is you can keep the volume constant and the temperature constant, but you can increase the number of uh, particles, increase n, and that will also increase the pressure because with every particle you're adding, you're adding more collisions with the walls. So that increases the pressure. Okay, here's our second result. Second result is about um, kind of averaging velocity, averaging speeds. So in this part, box of ideal gas, what is the average velocity? So if we average over all these molecules, well, what's going to happen is everything's going to cancel out. We have as much stuff going left as right as at any instant, as much stuff moving up as moving down at any instant. So on average, the velocity will be zero. So we don't use the average velocity in our calculations because it's zero. But we do need something to do. We do need to do some kind of average with the speed. Uh, so we don't quite do the speed either. What we do is we something we do something called an RMS average. And RMS stands for root mean square. Okay, so if you have a bunch of velocities, what you do is you square all those velocities. That makes everything positive. You take the average, the mean, of those squared values, and then you take the square root of that average. Okay, so it's and this is what is known as the RMS speed, and that's what appears actually in a lot of calculations. Okay, so again, square the speeds, square the velocities really, but it doesn't really matter because it's speeds and velocity are the same after you square them just all positive numbers, take the average, take the square root of that result. That's the RMS speed. OK, here's the really critical result from, critical, from kinetic theory. And it's really telling us something fundamental about temperature. The temperature is a direct measurement of the average kinetic energy of the particles in the gas. So what results from kinetic theory this is in the book if you want to go through that derivation, is that the product of pressure times volume, PV, is two-thirds times the number of molecules times their average kinetic energy. And if we compare that to the ideal gas law, PV equals NKT, then 
we can see by inspection that two-thirds k ab is kt, little kt. Okay, in other words, multiplying both sides by uh, three halves, we get uh, k ab, average kinetic energy, is three halves kt. So the temperature is a direct measurement of the average kinetic energy, which is a really interesting idea, right? Because temperature, when you measure it, that's kind of a macroscopic measurement, okay? You're getting a global kind of temperature for um, the whole system. And yet this gains you information about what's going on at the microscopic level. Uh, you gain information about the average kinetic energy of the molecules themselves. So that's really what temperature is all about. It's directly measuring, in some sense, the average kinetic energy of the molecules. Okay, so that is uh, all for today. Okay, so now you know what temperature is.